Our correspondent Greg McKenzie is at the Carnival in central London. We can join him now. So, Greg, what's the atmosphere like there? Well, it's very wet here in West London, but that isn't dampening the atmosphere here at the second and final day of the Notting Hill Carnival. And by the end of today, more than a million people will have taken to the streets. Now, behind us are some of the sound systems. There's 60 of those in total, lots of Caribbean food, and Carnival here in the UK is all about celebrating Caribbean culture. Now with us is Lewis Ben, who is one of the trustee directors of the carnival. He's responsible for actually organising this event. And I understand planning for something like this takes ages. It is an all-year-round event. It happens all year round. The planning working with all the stakeholders to make sure the two days go as smoothly and enjoyable as possible. And yesterday was Children's Day here at the Carnival. Today it's more about the adults, and this is where the main festivities take place. So talk us through what happens here today. Yeah, today's the main event for the big people, as we say, where the costume puts masqueraders, the steel panics, all the sound systems, the Calypsodians all come out in full flavour to give them the best of their skills and give a great, great day, great celebration. And I understand it's 50 years this year of the steel bands being in Notting Hill, but Carnival itself is only 48 years old. Right, it's, it, well, it is a three-year celebration. So what we've done, we've recognised the pan pioneers, be it Mr Henderson and Mr Betancourt, Russell Henderson and Mr Betancourt, who came out in 1964, so this year we're celebrating 50 years of the steel pan on the streets of Notting Hill. Next year we're doing 50 years of the first effect, um, effectively the first get together at Summer Fair led by Ruth Lazlett and bringing together the community. And in 1966 is the first year of steel, the carnival as we know it today. Wow. And many of the festivities will continue. Thank you, Lewis. And of course, the rain isn't deterring people here in West London. And like you said earlier, by the end of today, a million people will have walked through the streets of Notting Hill. Greg, very quickly, what is the one thing that you absolutely have to do at Carnival for people who've never been? Right, for people that have never been, you've got to be able to dance, you've got to blow the whistles, and you've just got to join in and have fun. I would dance, but... Um, hurt my leg. <laughs> That's you in the studio. <laughs> You've hurt your leg. Okay, I've heard that before. Greg McKenzie at the Notting Hill Carnival there in London for us. Thank you very much, Greg. Police were called here to Talbot Walk at around 10.30 last night after reports of gunfire. On arrival, officers discovered two teenage boys who'd been seriously injured from gunshot wounds. They were taken to hospital where their condition is said to be non-life-threatening. Engineers have been working round the clock since the flyover was closed to motorists almost two weeks ago. And once inside, the problems are clear to see. The engineers discovered major defects caused by water damage. And if you can see here, the rust for yourself on this 1960s structure, which will have to be replaced. James Brown is a hairdresser to the stars and has his own hair care range. His appointments diary reads like a who's who of the capital's most fashionable people. But could his reputation be damaged? After it was revealed, he racially abused a TV presenter at last weekend's BAFTA Awards. You don't expect to have somebody sort of quite forcefully use the N words, you know, seven or eight times. Um, I, I was shocked, put it that way. Just because someone's black doesn't mean they're into gangster rap and they, they're going to use those words. You know, I'm from Surrey um, and I'm a trained dancer. So you know, it's very different to that. And that almost offended me more, the fact that someone is making a judgment about me simply on the colour of my skin. Tonight, James Brown issued a public apology. I drunk far too much and my behaviour was totally unacceptable. Everyone who knows me knows that I'm not a racist, but this incident has shown me that my drinking is way out of control. Ben says he's spoken to James and accepts the apology, but is slightly worried, having received a death threat from a member of the public. I got an email through my Performing Arts Academy website, someone saying that because I'd written the article, I'd signed my own death threat. So that's now with the police, because obviously you have to take these things seriously. A spokesperson for BAFTA says they weren't aware of the racial incident that occurred at the award show last weekend. They have, however, issued a statement saying they are investigating the matter further. Greg McKenzie, BBC London News. Police were called to this block of flats on Christmas Day morning after neighbours reported hearing loud screams coming from one of the properties on the eighth floor. 
On arrival, officers discovered the body of a 15-year-old boy in the bath. He had sustained multiple injuries and was pronounced dead at the scene. Four other children who were also at the property at the time are currently under police protection. Her dear Ali knew the family, but says they only moved in a few weeks ago. I did sense that, you know, uh, they, they were kind of closed family. Uh, from the information that we have, I think it's an internal, you know, isolated problem within that household. So it's, you know, it's, it's a conflict within their own household and it doesn't, you know, extend to anybody else. So in that sense, there is that relief in the neighbourhood in the sense that, you know, um, parents aren't going to be vigilant. Um, you know, we can be safe, you know, knowing that it was just an isolated incident. But it is shocking, you know, especially uh, being so in front of your house. You know, it's just shocking, I guess. A man and a woman both aged 27 have been arrested and are in custody at separate East London police stations. Detectives have been granted more time to question them over the teenager's death. Greg McKenzie, BBC London News.